everyone. It's Daphne from Scrap and Create. We are working on uh, page eight. Page eight. So I want to share with you what I did. I took the 12 by 12 collection pack and naturally tore it all apart. So it really looks something like this. This was this was wider. And I trimmed, well, there's, there's what it looked like. Um, so I cut out this element, this element, and then down here I cut the landscape. And then I framed this right here. And I cut the fox and grapes off because it, because I had to cut at an angle here to get around uh, my grapes. I've got an angle here. And so I just placed my fox and grapes right there. It's just taped on. I'll figure out exactly what that looks like in a minute. So I took these uh, large elements from the 12 by 12. I'm going to use this blue background, which is... It has to be from the 8 by 8 It has to be. Yeah. Um, and I'm saying that because of the scale. But I like the blue background so that we've got essentially a sky background on the back of this. This is going to be a an element that, um, that will have some dimension on it. Okay, so I'm not ready to glue this down yet because I have to think about a few things and, and magnet placement. But I wanted to give you the gist and so you can set these papers aside and either start fussy cutting and come back and finish it or you may want to watch the whole thing through and, um, and then put it together. Okay, so I'll be back in just a few minutes. Okay, everyone, I got it together. <laughs> I planned this last night and I kind of forgot what I was doing, but I'm back and I got it figured out. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do, and it turns out this is just like page one. We're gonna have two flaps that are four and a half by eight. Four and a half by eight, they're gonna be an upper and a lower. Okay, there's a lower, the upper end. There we go. Pretty straightforward. So the base is going to be this blue. Um, so now we have to think about which, which corner do we want up. We like that. Or do we like this? And then we're going to have um, this on here as well. So let's rotate that one more time. I love this corner, but I'm not sure it works with our page. <sighs> I think I like this this way. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and ink this and lay it down. And you may notice there's some scribbly marks on here, and that's because I accidentally put glue on the wrong side. But I'm, I am making this 100% with the paper I have and not pulling out any extra packs. So, um, so you're gonna see those lines. And it's okay. The glue is dried, so it's not really gonna be a problem. A little tacky but I think I'm okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and glue this down. You should have one of these intact in the 8x8 collection pack to use as your background. in. Okay, now I fussy cut this tree um, off of the 12 by 12 and you can see I kind of just shaped around the edge of, of the branch here. Um, this is going to be slightly covered up with the fox so I'm not really concerned about it. This is going to get glued directly to the base page as is. I'm going to add a little ink to the top. Okay. There we go. Let's 
it's a little too loopy. Spread that out a little. Okay. So again, this is just going to get installed flush with the bottom corner and the edge here. Like so. This is a little tricky because there's some dimension on page seven. So just make sure all your edges are down. Okay, this is gonna be a pop-up element. And then this is trimmed off the top of the tree here somehow. I think it looks something like this before I trimmed it all up. We're gonna save that. And this is gonna be a pop-up element coming from the top flap. So the next thing we need to do is we need to cover the A, the the B side of the top and bottom flap, I am going to use the same collection pack from the eight by eight, cut it in half, cover both of these. There we go. We'll ink those and lay those down, and then we will work on getting our 3D elements put in. Let's try it around. Forgot to ink it. Let's do that real quick. Hopefully my glue won't dry. I can see as soon as I go to lay it down, I can see that white core against the black so strongly. I don't like it. Some people don't mind, it bothers me. I don't care if it's on a white uh, base, but I, I don't like it on a black base. Okay, there we go. So now we got both our B-sides in. Let me move these bits. So these are just scraps that I have um, that look like they'll blend um, to use as um, the mechanism to pop this open. So I still need to trim a little bit here, so I'm trying to decide what I want to do. I don't want to get too close to the tree and have any part of that hanging out past um, I'm sorry, I lost my train of thought past the edge of the um, base pocket page. Now originally when I trimmed this out, it was it kind of came out like this. Yeah, it did come out like this. And there was a big branch that came out through here. Knowing what I know now, I would have cut through the branch this way, and that way I wouldn't be trying to mask this right now. Um, so like I said, that you're going to learn um, if you watch ahead. And it looks like I'm going to need to cut off my city. So I'm going to do that right now. We're going to cut that off um, up to his nose. And I'm not going to get rid of it. I'm going to hold on to it, and I'll show you why because we can add it back in. Okay, now I'm gonna ink where I just trimmed. And we're gonna lay it in, test it again. 
How am I liking it? Good. So now I can lay my, my village back in behind it here. And I don't have a lot of paper, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to extend this with a little bit of black cardstock or matching cardstock and tuck it in right here so we still um, get the benefit of the city, just not where it was originally planned. And because of that, this blue now looks a little funny, so I'm going to fussy cut around his ears. I am going to leave a margin. Because I'm not cardstock backing this, I don't want it to be too flimsy. I'm going to leave his whiskers. And then we'll cut around his eyes and his snout. And of course, ink it. There we go. So that's looking pretty good. Now the question is, how am I going to feather feather this in? One option is to scoot over. That leaves our tree hanging off, which I really don't like. I can't have that hanging off, so I'm just going to go ahead and feather that in. Just get rid of all my straight lines there. See how that looks. I'm going to make that work. It's not perfect, um, but I'm, I'm okay with it. It just looks like there's a log laying in front of um, the tree now. So I just want to make sure I'm emphasizing sort of that log. Okay, I, I'm okay with that. This is very experimental. You're, go, you're gonna cut and lay it in, cut and lay it in, and then make some decisions. Okay, so that's good. So the next thing we're gonna do is along the bottom of this, we're gonna add a one inch hinge, and it's gonna be one inch scored in half, and it's gonna be roughly the length or width of this element. So I'm going to look at my scraps and see if I've got a piece that's that wide. And if not, pieces that are that wide. Ideally, it'll be um, close to this color. So here's an example. So I think, let's see how wide this is. It only needs to be one and a half inches. And it's two. Oh, I'm sorry, one inch, one inch wide scored in half. So I've got two of these, so I'm gonna cut this in half, then score both of these, and then just use two on this instead of one long one. Okay, and you guys are gonna see me do that here in a second if it's not clear. I'm going to use my straight edge and just a, it's too small to deal with in the trimmer. Go. There we go. Now each of these are going to get scored in half lengthwise. I need to do some housekeeping. My desk is a mess. Okay, the next thing is I'm going to ink all the way around, fold it on the score line, and make sure you ink the score line. This doesn't have to be done with designer paper, but I think it just masks it better. Um, you could do it with a black cardstock or cream cardstock or something else, but I just think it masks it better. Because you definitely don't want your eyes drawn to these tabs. Okay, and remember to ink the score line itself. Okay, now when we glue this in, I think I want to reverse my score line. So when it's glued down and opened, that's what you're going to see, not the green, okay? So we're going to glue the green side down, in this case, the green side down, whatever the matches the background that you're adhering it to should be on the inside. The outside doesn't really matter because it's going to be attached to the base and to the flap. 
Take the score line, apply it to the bottom edge of your 3D element. Like so. Okay, now we're gonna add the other one. And we're gonna reverse it because we want the green on the outside. We want the tan on the inside, which is closest to these two colors. Oops, I forgot to put ink on the hinge. You can always add it after you glue it down too. Okay. There we go. So now the next thing is it's gonna get glued down right here on the flap, not on the base. So you're gonna come up a half half inch, which is what this score should be, and install it so that when it's open, it's a half inch away from, sorry, a half inch away from your score line. I mean, from the pocket page and the flap score line, okay? So go ahead and get your glue on the exposed hinge. Okay. And we need to we need to look at where I want this relative to the edge of the, the page here because my uh, hinge is inset. Okay, that looks good. Close your flap, press the hinges, and there we go. Okay. There's the beginning. So the next thing we're gonna need is something that's gonna hold it, keep it from following the flap all the way over. So we're gonna use an anchor here. And I'm gonna call that a tab. That tab is, needs to be one and a half inches uh, deep. And I want it to be, I don't know, a couple inches wide. So I'll be right back after I locate something that works that's that color. Actually, this might do it. Yes, it will. One and a half. Yeah. So I'm going to use this back here. So in this case, link, I'm going to put a score line at half inch and one inch. And then there should be a half inch gusset left. Let's see how wide this is. It is wider than I need by a quarter inch. So I'm just going to trim this down a little bit. It needs to be a one and a half. Okay, there we are, one and a half. Okay, now we're going to score one inch, I mean half inch, one inch. Lengthwise. Now this is going to go in this way, so the color I want is this on the outside. I'm going to burnish this, ink it, and then I'll show you how to apply it. Okay, so we have Gusset one, two, and three. The center will have no glue on it. The first one and the last one will both have glue. So I'm gonna glue the last one first, or the one closest to me. And I'm going to place it, I want it to be as straight as possible so that when I fold it over, the hinges will make it lay flat and I don't have to redo my score lines. So I'm using my ruler to place it, uh, you know what, that's a little too low. Let's place it right about here. And I'm just using my grid line to give me uh, a straight line. Okay, I'm gonna put it in right there. Good, good. Okay, now we're gonna skip the center one and we're gonna place glue on here. 
Now you're gonna lay the two gussets flat. You're gonna close the flap and the 3D mechanism, both. Like so, press it into place. And there's our 3D element, okay? So we've got that. Now I went ahead and fussy cut this and I want this to be a 3D element from the top down. So we're gonna do the same process, only this is gonna come from the top down. But before I do that, I wanna look at it for a second because I'm not sure I want this much hanging down. I might want to lighten this up a little. It looks pretty heavy on this side. Yeah, so I'm gonna take a break. I'm gonna fussy cut some more around, probably to cut it down to about this width. I'll be right down, back. Okay, we're ready. So I looked at this and I, what I decided to do was much easier than fussy cut through here. So I just made the whole thing shorter by trimming off about a half an inch from the top. And um, I'm happy with that. So the first thing we're gonna do, just like we did down here, is we're going to glue a hinge right here to the top page. And that should be one inch wide, scored in half. And if I can get my fingers to work, <laughs> it's gonna be this, okay? So it is going to be the piece that is attached to the top flap that's gonna make this whole thing come together. So we're gonna glue this to the designer paper that we want to be the 3D element. We're gonna put the score line toward the top in this case. Okay, is that what I want? Mm, yeah, okay. So the score line's gonna go right flush with that straight line. Okay, we'll give that a second to dry. Make sure it's flush. Okay, now we're gonna glue this half inch right up here. Did I do that right? No, I didn't. Sorry, that has to come off wrong. I did it wrong. I have to think. Sorry about that. Oh, that's what this one is, okay. So I want it to come down like so. It's gotta be glued. Let's see, doot doot, half inch. You know what? I had it right. I, I wigged out for no reason. So the score line is going to be right here on the straight edge, which winds up being the top. <laughs> I don't know why I'm struggling with this, but oh, I know why, because this is wide open. Okay, now we're gonna glue this to the top, like so. And I just want the edge of the grapes to be flush. Like so, with the edge of the, uh, I'm sorry. I'm having a hard time talking and working with the edge of the flap here. Okay, so there you see it's standing off. Now we need the um, one and a half inch strip that's gonna go below, that's gonna hold it off the center. And here it is. So this is one and a half inches wide, scored at half inch, one inch. We're going to, um, I have to think about this place. I want to make sure I'm doing this so that as little of this shows as possible. Okay, we're going to play, put glue here and place it on here. The center will always remain glue free. And I'm going to again pull my ruler out because I want to put it in as straight as possible. So I'm just going to line up with my grid. Okay, there we go. Okay, 
right now we're going to fold it over completely so both the center and the bottom gusset are revealed we're going to place glue on the bottom gusset then we're going to take the 3d element and the flap both and close press it into place and there's your top and bottom 3d elements and i didn't press it into place hard enough so we'll do that one more time I've got a little desk fan going and I think it's drying my glue faster than I can work. Okay. Hold that into place for a second. There we go. Isn't that cool? Okay, so that's done. So now we need to get the A-sides. We're going to add the storyline. And you know what? I wanted to add... A, actually, this doesn't go with this one. It goes with something else, but I had that little city, yeah, it's cityscape. So I want to add this somehow, I think. I'm trying to decide if it's even worth my effort um, because it's shaped so oddly. Let me see if I can't make this work. So I'm going to attach it to a piece of scrap black paper. Uh, it doesn't have to be very big. I want the black paper to be on the bottom of the image, like so. Okay, and then I'm gonna trim it about an inch. Okay, let's clean up the end. So now I've got this paper to help me secure it somewhere. Instead of just trying to glue that teeny tiny little line there. And it's shaped so funny. I've got so many cutouts, I'm not sure I can use it. I don't think it's gonna work. Okay, but that just gives you an idea that that's ways to put things behind it. If I did use it, I would likely put um, a little spacer here, like a piece of foam or whatever, so you get um, a little bit more dimension and it would also just follow this because it would be glued to this piece. Okay, let's focus on the a -sides. I'm gonna toss that because I think it's too small to work with. And I'll be right back. Okay, I picked out this beautiful pattern paper. Isn't it gorgeous? The grapes, and since this is fox and grapes, I think it goes along with the theme really well. I'm going to um, ink the edges. And then we're going to, I'm trying to think about if I want, how I want to lay this out. This is just about done. I'm gonna get me a new one. I'm having to work too hard. Hmm. I thought I had another one on the desk somewhere. But I don't see it. That needs to go on another page. No, no. Well, so much for getting a new one. I can't find, I thought I had a new one open, but I didn't. Let's see what I did okay, so we'll just go ahead and use this one. go like so. So we have the story that needs to be incorporated. So I think what I'm going to do is um, have this be attached to the top so the magnet will be on the bottom and behind uh, this element. <laughs> okay. I don't know how this happened but my glue is across the room. So just glue the top one. hope you guys are enjoying this. It's definitely different from what I have done in the past. I'm 
mean, some things are the same, the base album build, the number of pages. Okay, there we go. So this is gonna go down here, and this is gonna be up here. So because this is not just um, a rectangular edge, I'm gonna go ahead and trace this out and figure out what I'm gonna put in the back of it. And we'll wanna flip it over and then trace it. Let's see, what did I do on the inside? Same thing. So I'm just gonna trace, trace it, let's see. Yeah, I'm gonna use the green, uh, which came from the uh, Fox and Grapes 8x8. Eight eight. So I'm just gonna trace it. And it really doesn't need to be that big, maybe halfway. I think I just use a corner rounder here. I don't think I thought they cut that, so that should be pretty straightforward. Let's take a look real quick at how deep we want to go. Yeah, that should be enough. Okay. I'm going to cut on the inside of the trace line because the, I already backed it with black cardstock. And that way we'll get our, our offset for the border. And I'm going to use a corner rounder on the corner that. Oops, wrong drawer. go ink it we should be ready to go let's double check how does it look I think I could take a little more off yeah I'm gonna take a little more off this side And I'm cutting this side because it's a straight side. It's just the easiest. Just one more time. Yeah, I like that better. What do you guys think? It looks good. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and put a magnet on here and glue this on. Because I know it's going to reach. We don't have to worry about that. And then we'll locate the other magnet uh, before we glue this piece down. Okay. take this off it was just temporarily taped now we can figure this out I think I'm going to use this um, paragraph break to place it we'll see how that looks There we go. Doesn't that look pretty? Let's place our second magnet. <clears throat> this tape is 5 8 inch wide, which is just enough to go around the whole magnet. I wish they made beveled edge magnets. That would be awesome. Somebody should do that, whoever's watching. 
it must be a difficult thing to do. They must uh, slice these um, with a laser. So to create a beveled edge would be a second process. But it sure would be nice not to have such a sharp edge against your paper. Okay, guys, we're almost there. Just making sure I've got this right side up. There we go. Paigey! Room for a photo here if you want. Okay, so the last thing is our fox and grapes. This is just fussy cut by hand, cardstock backed, and I'm just going to place it just off to the side. Let's see if that looks straight. Hmm. There we go. There you go. Page eight. All right, now we need to get to finish up the cover. So that's it for page eight. I'll be back soon with cover of the album.